Okay, good evening everyone. We did have a public hearing scheduled for 7 o'clock tonight um, regarding the uh, uh, Canyon Run Extension Drainage District. Uh, it had to be canceled and it will be postponed until January, but our town attorney will explain uh, why that happened. Yeah, I mean, the short answer is because creation of a, a drainage district, which is a sp what's called a special district under New York law, requires more than just the scheduling of a public hearing. It also requires adoption of an order that's based on the map, plan, and report that is filed by whoever it is that wishes to have the special district created. We now have the map, plan, and report. It needed some tweaking. It needed some refinements. Those refinements appear to have been made. If the town board um, is comfortable with it as is, which we are as town council, which I think Ryan is as town engineer, you can adopt that order tonight, but that adoption of order step has to happen prior to or at the same time as scheduling of the public hearing. Okay. So the proposed resolution that you've got, or the I should say the proposed order that you've got before you this evening, um, includes adoption of the map plan and report. Doesn't mean anything's being approved. Doesn't mean a district is formed. Doesn't mean a district is created. Um, it just advances the process. But that's a step that's required by state law prior to the public hearing. If you adopt that order this evening, it includes in its in its terms <coughs> a scheduling of a public hearing for our January meeting. What's the date of the meeting? Um, That's only to talk about it. Correct. None of which means anything's approved. January None of which 4th. obligates approval or anything January like that. 4th, okay. Yeah. okay. Since it won't be a public hearing, I'll now call to order the regular monthly meeting of the uh, Wilton Town Board. And we will begin, as usual, with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. Formation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Supervisor Johnson. Here. Deputy Supervisor Stryker. Here. Councilwoman Clefitar. Here. Councilman Lamb. Here. Councilman McEachran. So I'm sick. Yeah, John is a little under the weather, so he's excused. Okay, before we begin um, the meeting, I just, um, this is Councilwoman Klepitar's last meeting after serving uh, four years on the board. And I just want to take this opportunity to thank Joanne for her hard work and the contributions she's made uh, to this board. Thank you. Thank you. Did a good job, Joanne. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. Thank you. now is a public comment period okay we got some folks who would like to speak um, there is a, a three limit uh, three minute time limit uh, first is uh, Scott Kingsley Scott if you come up here give your name and address thank you Scott Kingsley 105 Traver Road uh, I just wanted to take a few minutes and uh, uh, address the board and address the audience uh, I just wanted to as we close out 2017 I just wanted to thank uh, all the members of the town board and all the town employees uh, for another year of great outstanding service to the town of Wilton, uh, especially Councilwoman Kleppetar as this is her last meeting and I wanted to thank her for her four years on the board. Being a, uh, public, being a public official, regardless of party or position, is, it is a hard thing. It is no easy task. Not just running for office, but actually serving in any capacity. Uh, so it's you know, like lawyers, it's easy to you know kick politicians around a little bit. But uh, you guys do a fantastic job, and you are do sacrifice time out of your <coughs> family lives to make sure our community uh, you know functions. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you, and to every uh, all the employees in the town, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and a great 2018. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we have Alan Ross. Alan. <coughs> My name is Alan Ross, uh, 29 Eden Road. Um, thank you for the opportunity to uh, uh, speak tonight about the, the indoor pickleball fees at Captain Park. I know you have much weightier things to uh, consider, uh, uh, not only tonight, but uh, generally on the agenda. But um, 
At the September meeting, the town board decided to make a change in the pickleball fee structure. Uh, beginning January 1, Wilton residents will continue to pay $3, while non-residents will begin to pay $5 per session. Uh, some changes are needed or desirable, and other times they are not. This is one of the times we think that uh, change is not needed nor desirable. Uh, there is no need to change the fee of $3 for everyone. Uh, the reason is pretty straightforward. Um, the amount collected from the current $3 fee must uh, more than cover the cost of operating the pickleball, pickleball program. The <coughs> conservative estimate indicates that $3 per player times 25 players average per day uh, results in $75 per day times five days a week. We play Monday through Friday. Uh, results in 375 a week times four weeks is $1,500 a month um, times seven months. We actually uh, have a season of seven and a half months, but just based on seven months, uh, that multiple then comes out to um, $10,500. That seems to be a pretty considerable amount uh, for maintaining the uh, expenses for light, uh, the two-hour daily expenses for light, heat, staff, and uh, minimal equipment uh, could not possibly exceed um, that amount. Um, from the player standpoint, there's no desire to uh, have fees, uh, have higher fees for non-residents. Uh, as residents, we enjoy the benefit for non-residents coming to play at uh, Based on a recent informal player survey, it was found that non-residents make up uh, approximately two-thirds of all players on a given day. Uh, just to give you some idea of the proportion, we, I maintain an informal email list of players at Gavin, and there are currently over 115 players on the email list. Uh, obviously, not all of them play every day, uh, every week, but on an average day, we have between 25 and 30 players. And uh, I should point out that, for the most part, they are seniors. Uh, we play in the mornings from 9.30 to 11.30. And uh, so it's a, it's a, um, a great benefit for, for seniors to uh, have this opportunity. Um, as I said, uh, residents enjoy the benefit of non-residents coming to play. Um, and we residents uh, really like having more people to play with. Uh, non-residents provide more and varied opportunities for residents to play. And um, non-residents have become friends and provide a great deal of social enjoyment uh, for the residents. Uh, residents do not want non-residents dissuaded from playing at, the, at Gavin because of the additional fee costs. Non-residents already spend extra gas money. Uh, Alan, you're uh, running out of time. So I'd like to just uh, ask the board to uh, consider these factors and uh, in closing, uh, I'd like to say uh, what a wonderful experience it, it, it is, just the way it is. Broke. Uh, we're asking you not to fix it by changing the, the fee schedule and uh, to keep it at three dollars for everyone. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Next, we have uh, Karen Dwyer Smith. Mm -hmm. I'll just add to Alan's um, plea. <laughs> um, I know you've already probably got this all figured out and it's going to happen. But I, I do, I would like to say that there are people who feel it's um, inevitable to have um, this happen to the triple ball players. Then I know there are other drop in programs where they all pay the same rate, whether they're resident, non resident. Um, so I just, I just wonder what the difference is and, and, and how, how we got to this. <coughs> and thanks for listening. Thank you. Uh, Pat does. Pat Tuz to Amanda Core in Saratoga Springs. Um, as chairman of the Wilton Democratic Committee, uh, I just felt it important to congratulate all the candidates, who some are not here, on a well done campaign this year. I, as a non-candidate, particularly enjoyed it because I really enjoyed talking to our residents. And it, I just wanted to share what I found on the campaign trail. 
Um, but first, all these candidates <coughs> displayed such good character, something I feel that's so much more important than what party you are in, and something that's sorely lacking in many of our officials. Our democratically endorsed candidates, they did well, we're very excited, and I can only urge you to really consider um, the concerns of our residents and I just wanted to share what they said mm -hmm. and I also believe that sadly Joanne is leaving I just don't think it's good to have a one-party town government it doesn't do anybody any good but just consider that in 1970 the population was 3,000 40 years later it's now it's multiplied five times to 16,211 that is huge that is very fast growing and there's more land to develop and more developers who want to develop the land. So that's great depending on who's, you know, who's looking at it. But the one thing that always came across this time, last time, every time, is that people are very concerned about developments, the repercussions of development like overcrowding in schools, traffic of water. I know that's no surprise to any of you because your fall phone survey asked people their concerns and development was one that ranks very high with um, everybody. So that said, um, it's not particularly articulated by the town residents, but I ask you to reconcern the need for reinstatement of a separate town planning position. Um, you know, th this, is, this growth is, is amazing, it's great, but it does yield lots of problems. So the other thing, once again, that people are concerned about are bike paths, safe multi-use paths, and wide paved shoulders in the more populated areas of town. Um, and I find it interesting that all three of our town plans always mention that we have them. And I haven't seen any of them, and, uh, but it indicates to me that you know people want them and they're a good selling point to encourage business to move here. It's even mentioned on the blueprint for economic development. So let's, let's make it a reality. People also mention once again they want a swimming pool at Gavin Park. That your time. Am I done? <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> anyway, I, you know, there's lots of stuff to be done. I really enjoy, um, you know, working on projects in the town, and I feel there's so many more places we can go with it. So I'm offering my help, my services. I'd be very happy to work on any committees that you set up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Uh, Jim. Uh, Swart. Swart. <laughs> Uh, my name is Jim Swart from Queensbury, New York, one of the non-residents that may be affected by the proposed uh, fee increase. I'd just like to say that the Gavin facility is a wonderful facility that your town has. It's uh, amazing. It's got uh, six courts, uh, two gymnasiums there that uh, makes it available to a wide range of people and activities there. So it's commendable that the town has that uh, resource available. And I would just like to say that a recent convert to pickleball in the last couple of years. It's a great sport, keeps people active, especially the seniors. Um, and it's a great social event. In fact, I think Gavin, uh, the pickleball players there, it's more of a community than anything else. And we all enjoy each other's company, but I think with the proposed $5 increase, there will be fewer and fewer non-residents attending there. We can go to Saratoga rep for $4, which is uh, a dollar over the residents of uh, Saratoga, um, which has also six courts available to play in there. Um, it would be, I would be upset not being able to play a Gavin. I mean, I can play. I don't feel that the uh, $5 uh, increase is warranted, but um, it would limit the amount of time I would be able to play there and uh, miss our friends there. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Tony De, De Palma. My name is Tony De Palma. I'm a, re I'm a, a resident of Malta, New York, actually, Boston Spot. I'm here on behalf of uh, fellow picklers and pickleball group. 
Um, I do belong to the YMCA down in Clifton Park, and I played down there for about four or five years. I'm a silver, silver sneaker, which means I could play for free. I didn't have to pay at all. But because of the facility at Gavin, and I was introduced to it roughly a year ago, it's well worth the three dollars, and it's worth the drive up here. But from my my standpoint, and some other some other some of the other players, that if it goes up to five dollars, they're just going to play elsewhere. Then you, you you lose a lot of players and a lot of the interaction that that the sport of pickleball offers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, that concludes our public comment. People that have signed up. Um, so next we have. The next item on the agenda is to approve the pending minutes from our, our November meeting. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? I'll put forth a motion to approve the pending minutes. Okay. I'll second. Okay, a motion is second. Is there any uh, uh, discussion or changes recommended or amendments? Okay, hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Okay, uh, uh, Town Attorney Mark Schachter earlier described the situation about an order to establish a proposed drainage district and set up a public hearing. Um, Mark has uh, drafted a, a resolution that you have before you. Um, this would set down the parameters and the set of public hearing which would be, uh, if, if uh, approved, would be for January 4th at 7 p.m. Any questions of Mark on the on the um, resolution he's drafted? Mark, I just have one question. This is petition dated. Is that is that okay? I think, I think that's a dated petition. Okay. I have a question, but not for Mark necessarily. Um, what is the advantage to the town for doing this? Who does benefit? Ryan, the builder, town, homeowners, all that flood land that bothers me, all that drainage. You know, I watched Jones Road years ago flooded out for years. As a benefit, obviously, <coughs> developer because they are building homes. It's an engineered solution mm. to the requirements of our groundwater separation for our slab of the basements of the homes to be th greater than three feet above high groundwater mark, which is a standard that was set uh, several years ago to ensure you know the, the houses are placed near the groundwater. Did I know in uh, Katrina? The Army Corps of Engineers went in there and they built all those levees. When that storm went through, it took them all out. The river went back to its natural course. And they're probably a lot smarter than the people we had here looking at our stuff. You just got a problem with this project. You know, a person lives here for 10 years and 5 years and who are they going to come back on? You know, we heard last year people about the wells going dry, blame us and high water tables a couple years ago in no wood. They come back to us. They come back to the taxpayer. Somebody's got to pay for this stuff. I think um, I just got a problem with it myself. We had the situation in Olson Farms, and it's been working great, great over there. What it. So you know, I, I hunt an area right now. I've never seen so many swamps in my life. I just can't imagine going to build houses in there. I just can I'm not a builder, believe me. I don't know nothing about building. I don't really know nothing about the soil, but I, I got a little bit, I know a little bit about what, what Mother Nature can do. I, I, I just can't believe, even some of the projects before our time, I see these cattails this high around these buildings. And I know as a kid, cattails is always water. Just, I think all these, all these things are gonna come back and haunt us. Some, maybe not this board, the next board, but somebody's going to be haunted with this stuff. 
Ryan, you, you may want to mention all the, the extended studies that ha was required to, that were done to ensure right. the, the drainage you know, this when, would work. I know all, all about studies. <laughs> I've seen them on roads. You know, there's only so many accidents. I was a chief for 25 years at Maple Avenue. We have 100 accidents on Route 50. They show we have 20. I just so I don't I had I don't have much faith because there's always somebody paying for for the study what benefits them. Well, without the drainage drainage district, the, the project can still be built on yeah. with just filling lots and making bunch of anthills. Uh, just tell me how well, that's I, what I'm just wondering about. How, just tell me how I feel. I'm not here to fight with you, sir. Does the town ever deny a builder from building on his property? And what are those provisions that would, would keep a developer from developing? I mean, how far do you go to let someone develop their land? Mark, you want to say? Well, I'm, as everybody knows, I'm only about process. Mm -hmm. um, my thought, it's only a thought for the board to think, consider is the public hearing has been, has been canceled. If you're inclined not to adopt the order and not have a public hearing, then this seems like a perfectly appropriate time to debate. But if you're inclined to adopt the order and schedule the public hearing, you might want to air these views when not only the applicant, but affected, potentially affected members of the public are present to hear you air your views. I, I don't care. I'm just throwing that out there just to, as a matter of process. Well, I won't be here, so See, my I need to get my two cents in. Good point. Good point. My problem is I'll be in a room on the beach just to report. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be thinking about you all. Here's, here's my comment. was not appropriately sympathetic to your plight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but to answer your question, Joanne, I think it, you know it, it, it's zone for public hearing. It's zone for R one. It's you know they meet the building codes. They can meet the building codes by this groundwater separation. It just makes a better oh, yeah. project, better for the residents over there with the drainage district. Well, there's no residents point. now. Hmm? There's no residents well, I mean now. The surrounding people on uh, fair and little along the, the uh, Damascus. Damascus Drive and all those adjacent. Uh, subdivisions over there. Prolong Hills, I think they call. So how many homes could be built if, if this was not the same number? Same number. It would just be different. It would be they would have to put in fill in order to separate the <coughs> they would bring in three feet of fill and break okay. the homes. And that could cause though a uh, water in from and nearby developments and homes. Mm, possibly. It, it's there's when the subdivision is designed, there is uh, it's designed such that you no know, surface water is to run to other properties. So you know it's it's contained within its own boundaries of the you know, surface water, but groundwater is different. Does a builder have a right to do either one? Right? They can choose which one. Is the right? It's he meets the zoning. Uh, this is just a, an engineered system that would be a better design to control, you know, the uh, groundwater. You know, I've been here a long time. I remember in the 60s when they had a trailer park and it flooded and they had to move all those trailers out there. That bothers me. That bothers yeah. Me. They didn't have a drainage system. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it bothers me that the town bends over backwards for developers. You know, we had problems off. Gaylor Road was a development in there. And the neighbor's yards all got flooded three, four years ago. Remember, Kirk? You know? Well, I guess the, the question is, do you want to schedule a public hearing or, or, or not? That's what essentially the ne next step, Mark, right? Yeah, that's the only decision before you tonight, and mm -hmm. there's not an obligation to. What's the consequences of not? I guess. I think what Ryan said. The district okay. won't get formed, and the no, I will proceed to bring Phil to the. If I understand correctly, bring Phil to the site. Well, I'd like to at least hear the yeah. pros and cons from professionals. Well, I think that would be good because the engineers and the people that did the study. I mean, they are professionals. So yeah. I think they should be heard. But yeah. We, you know, we did a whole uh, hydrogeological study on this. You know, not we, but the applicant did. Uh, it was requested by the planning board and uh, you know they are not here now to represent you know they there's no public hearing so there's no need for them to be here 
However, they do plan to be here for the public hearing and present and answer questions at that time. Right. I'm not saying I'm, I'm in favor or not in favor of a, of a development there, but I am uh, worried if we don't make any, if we don't decide which way we'd rather have it, having a, uh, a district there or just letting them do what they want to do, they're still going to build. I'd rather do it the way we want them to do it. Are you, are you so, make a motion to well, I'm going to put forth. Public? I'm going to put forth a motion to adopt the order of scheduling a public hearing on uh, January 4th, 2018, at 7 p.m. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further questions or discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you. I'm sure this debate will continue next month. Except we, we'll put you on conference call from the beach. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, the next item is uh, pickleball uh, fees. A few months back, um, this board approved a fee schedule for all the, all the programs at, uh, at Gavin Park to take effect uh, January 1, 2018. Uh, with pickleball, we the fees we continue the fees at three dollars for residents and non-residents uh, were f were five dollars. Um, since then, we've had a request from Mr. Ross and, and others to keep the fees at at uh, three dollars. We did or we did uh, uh, asking. Send it back to Park and Rec Commission, who actually originally uh, makes recommendations on these to see what their thoughts uh, were on it. And I think you were at that meeting, yes. uh, Steve. I asked that they would to we discuss it a little at the meeting, and uh, they all felt strongly that the new fees were appropriate, uh, five to none. All all five board members felt strong that. That and uh, Mark was there, and he gave his opinion uh, about it. And uh, so I just wanted to let the board know how they felt, and the Park and Rec Commission felt. And I don't know if Mark wants to talk uh, a minute or two about some of the reasons why we chose. Is that okay, Mark? Sure. <coughs> so I've heard a lot of good things that they're presenting. We respect the uh, pickleballs. We enjoy having them at Gavin Park. Some of the things that are not talked about that should be included in discussion, for example, uh, they don't have to pay the pickleball for outdoor courts from April to September. There's no charge. You can play seven days a week. I don't know many places that offer that kind of opportunity, but we do. The tennis courts, which have windscreens, Initially, they, were, they contributed to the purchase of them in the beginning, but now we have to replace one. That's costing us $750 to replace another windscreen. The reason why the windscreens are there because it enhances their play, keeps the wind from blowing the balls from side to side. There's six very nice indoor courts in comparison to the ones in the community, I mean outside the community. We serve two to three pots of coffee daily and no charge. We set up and break down the nets for them we provide specialty pickleballs and nets. So we actually purchase additional balls to be 60 or so every couple of years to replace the ones that are missing. All the courts are, specific, are aligned specifically for pickleball. That's in, indoor and outdoor. We prepare and maintain gyms in favorable condition for pickleballs. That includes we have to move the backboards. We have to clean up after games, pick up all the balls and trash after they leave. We provide a very comfortable, controlled climate for indoor play. We just replaced a thermostat and a motor in one of our heating systems in the daily gym. It costs us about $1,900. We have a very friendly, professional atmosphere. That's staff, we want to greet them, we talk with them. Pickleball is the only activity, a drop-in pro in one of our pro drop-in programs, over 30 men's is five dollars, and Splash Park is five and three. The Splash Park brought in over $20,000 this past year between 
entry fees and concession. So I know Alan was talking about numbers. Well, we have a similar pay structure, which was Flash Park. We brought in $20,000, and that's only a short season. You know, we consider the weather and, weather and so far this past year, a lot of rain and everything. We brought in that kind of money with that fee structure. Uh, in conclusion, I feel that we, over, we offer the best overall package, dollar for dollar. We talk about, you know, Saratoga, the Park, Saratoga Rec, but when you put the entire package, the Gavin Park office, I don't think anybody can compare to that. We did have, finally, we have some feedback from some of the players. One non-resident hopes you will stick with the, the, with the voted 2018 charges as he feels the facility is getting too crowded and he has played here for a number of years. One of the problems they, they was expressed recently is that the, a resident, or well, a couple of residents are complaining that they're not getting enough play time because we have too many people. We had a record 48 people on a Monday. What happened was, because there's so many people, a game that would play to 11 had to be reduced to seven just to get a rotation involved. And what's happened is our town residents are being bumped out from playing pickleball. We're trying to preserve the town residents, the ability, the opportunity for the town residents to play in our facility first. One, one woman from Northville recently praised the program for being an opportunity to meet nice people and such a great facility, and if the price goes, goes to five dollars for her, she thinks it's very reasonable. Most people say that it will come no matter what, even if it's five dollars. So what, what's happening is you're hearing a, a small group of people presenting their position, but they're not speaking for the majority. The majority are very comfortable with this and with the fee increase. Thank you. Okay, so, so I was gonna say one more thing. I, uh, you know, it's hard for all of us to raise rates, and but I think uh, it's been how long has it been going on? Six years. The, Six years. And it's been that rate for for a while now, and we, they felt it was appropriate to. Uh, this is what the Park and Rec Commission felt it was appropriate to raise those rates. Uh, the other thing they mentioned was uh, that uh, our uh, other fees. For other drop in sports are five dollars. I know non residents and not and residents, so they felt th the senior community that our residents would be three dollars instead of five and five. So that was important that they thought you know, give them a smaller break on, on that drop in rate. So that's all okay. So, anyway, the fee schedule is uh, to take effect January 1st, unless there's any. Um, Desire by this board to to make any amendments to the fee schedule. Um, any, does any anyone feel that we need to make an amendment or stick no. to it? Okay. No, I'm uh, I'm gonna stick with my our park and rec commission's opinions, and I I, I think they're okay. okay. I feel the same. So, unfortunately, Alan. It's the fee is uh, January one. The, the new fee schedule will take effect. Okay. I kind of disagree with what you said about that gym is not just for football players. Mm -hmm. You have daycare there, and you have camps there that you've been doing. That's the most important thing. I've never seen the way you met the gym. They're very good at picking up. I'm not sure they still are there. All right, so we'll move on to the next uh, Thank you. agenda item. Wilt Wildlife Preserve and Park. Uh, the Executive Director, Margo Olson, is here to give uh, either quarterly or year-end report. There's some more copies of, there's a report on the side table that I don't know if people had a chance to pick it up on the way in. Um, on the back side uh, is the schedule of what we have coming up in the coming month. Um, uh, and so in December and then going into January. So uh, there were a few flakes of snow that fell from the sky today. And so we're feeling optimistic uh, that winter is here and the winter season that everyone looks forward to at Camp Saratoga and Wildlife Preserve and Park will be a good one this year. We're hoping for snow. 
Um, in preparation for that, um, we have been preparing um, trail work to prepare for grooming the trails as we do at Camp Saratoga and Updahl Farm. Um, thank you to the board uh, of the town board for helping with the purchase of the pull behind mower um, that was used to do that grooming work so that um, will be able to be used not only for grooming but for maintenance in and around Camp Saratoga to be able to use. So we own the ATV that's used for the grooming program um, and then the mower belongs to the town. So we'll be able to uh, sort of lend the ATV to be used to mow in and around the buildings at Camp Saratoga on the parade ground. And so it'll be a nice win-win for Wild Wildlife Preserve and Park and for, um, for the public that uses those facilities uh, for the trails and in and around Camp Saratoga. So um, if you look at the report here, uh, it just sort of goes through uh, this last quarter, what we've been busy with. The fall, we were busy. We had a lot of public programs, activities going on, um, busy with some schools, some field trips in the fall, going and visiting classrooms, after school programs, going and visiting various community events, the Murrow Nature Fest, the Winter Raptor Fest, it was over at the Washington County Fairgrounds. Um, the Regional Science Festival down at my side. So uh, we had all of those activities going on. Uh, we just had our annual meeting and our sixth annual photography contest. Uh, so that's up at the office at 80 Scout Road. If anyone wants to come by, we've got some beautiful photographs uh, taken in and around the Preserve and Park that will be on display for the coming months. Uh, let's see. Oh, we're excited too. I was mentioning trail work. Um, Larry has been working with our intern and volunteers preparing for the Bicentennial Trail project, which is a collaboration with the town and um, the state of New York, DEC, um, who had to approve where it goes along Scout Road and then over to the county forest land. So it's again this partnership that we have with Wildlife Preserve and Park, the town, the state, the county, the Nature Conservancy, that we're really able to all bring our resources together and accomplish great things for the community as a whole. So that um, has been going on as well. So we're excited about that opening, which will take place the big weekend of the April, I think it's 21st and 22nd, with the history tours in and around uh, the town of Wilton that will be culminating at Camp Saratoga. And I know everybody's really excited about the Carner Blueberry ice cream that Stewart's will be um, having. I know we can't wait to get that Carner Blueberry ice cream. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of Carner Blue, uh, we worked uh, on conservation projects as well this fall. Um, over on the other side of Route 50, the Fox Park. There's new habitat work that's been going on there. And so our volunteers were out helping DEC, who were doing all of the trail mowing and the habitat work. And so our volunteers go out and help with moving brush and moving logs. That's right. And in the fall also with picking seeds from the important uh, nectar species that the butterflies <coughs> depend on for their food source. Um, so that's something that our, our volunteers enjoy doing, getting outdoors, working with other volunteers in the community doing something that helps uh, with the environment so that's always a nice project that goes on as well so um, just lastly I wanted to thank all of you looking around the room there were a number of you who attended our wild about blue fundraiser uh, last month it's our big really our only fundraising event of the year and this year we raised almost $25,000 which um, will go to support our programming. In particular, most of it goes towards our internship program. We have two interns um, and myself who work at the office, and so they are really responsible for being able to do a tremendous amount of the work that we get done working with the public, doing the programs that so many people um, get to enjoy and take part in. Um, one last thing that's not on the report here that just made me think of it, uh, we just had our annual meeting and so we pulled together our attendance figures and so we had um, direct contact with, so these are program numbers, 
with um, over 8,500 people in the in 2017, and so I believe that's our biggest number that we've had. And um, a lot of it has to do with being able to, with the interns and the programs we're doing, being able to really interact with so many people and do so many programs. Um, but that's only just a, a small part of what we do. At this time, we have no way to count the numbers of people that are out on the trails, going for a run, going with their kids down to the pond, walking with their dog, um, getting out and enjoying nature. And I think, you know, we all see when we go there how there's always cars in the parking lot, there's always people out using the trails. So the actual number of people who are utilizing the preserve and park and the facilities is much higher than that number of the people who are participating in a you know, particular form of program. Any, any questions? Any questions for Margo? I just have to say, you know, well done, job well done. Okay. It's a great facility. Oh, and always. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I know people are looking forward to the nice groom trails for cross country skiing yeah. and snowshoeing yeah. again this yeah. year. So it's on the, uh, we're going to start with uh, renting the cross country skis and snowshoes after the first of the year. And we have the date for the annual Moonlight Ski. They are calling it Candlelight Ski and Snowshoe this year on January 20th. The way the full moon schedule works this year, there's no Saturday that has any kind of moon in the sky. <laughs> so it will be candlelit. We'll have the luminary lit trails. <laughs> All right. Um, so we'll call it Candlelight instead of Moonlight. And next year there will be hopefully a, a moonlit night, but not this year. It's weird. February has no full moon. The Weird. There's like a full moon at the end. <laughs> Hopefully, get lots of snow. Yes. Yes. Only for that. For <laughs> that. <laughs> no. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Margo. Margo. Okay. Next, number nine. Uh, Kirk, you want to talk to us about uh, highway staffing? I just want to bring something to the town board for highway staffing. Uh, if you notice all over the place, the state DOT's got signs out for drivers, CDL people, whatever. It's getting very complicated to get somebody in the highway department. I also want the board to know and I will work with my liaison on this. I have one guy that's going to retire in March. I have another gentleman that's uh, considering on leaving. And I have another gentleman uh, that's got a medical problem. So I will work with my liaison on that and I'll keep the board informed on that. But it's getting to be a little bit more complicated. So whatever him and I discuss, I'm sure you'll pass on to you guys. Thank you. Okay. Kirk, as those I can tell you know, when those vacancies occur, Kirk will certainly um, move quickly to get those filled as those vacancies occur. Um, you've always done a great job. We've had people down before, and you always, as, as a manager, have to tr figure out a way to get the work done, even though you're down some well, staff. I so. appreciate that. Thank you. I can just let you know, the last time we filled a position, I got like 10 applications. I got one person with a permit and not a CDL, so he trained here, so we have an investment in him, and then everybody else with a CDL. And it's getting very, if you look all over the country, there's a very serious shortage of CDL. And uh, I mean, I'm just saying you got to have some experienced people when you're putting in a $200,000 piece of equipment. But I'll diligently do my job and work with my lead on to make sure, you know, we, we keep that thing working the way it should. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, bid approval for the pavilion. We've. Um, in the budget is, uh, correct me Jeff, we got $150,000 towards the pavilion uh, to be constructed at Gavin Park uh, next year. We went out to bid to supply the, to, uh, for the materials. Um, our town building staff is going to actually do the uh, erection of, of the, uh, of the building. So, uh, I, I believe the, the low bid uh, is, is from Munter for $120,000. $120,900. Okay. So we have enough money in the budget um, to, to approve that. Um, however, as we get into that project next year, that doesn't include foundation and, and, and those types of things, maybe some electrical work. So uh, so we got a little $30,000, but it's likely that we may need more. So at some point, uh, once we get into next year, we'll maybe coming back to the board for 
uh, some addition to that capital project to uh, be able to bring it to completion. So, but tonight we're just in looking to award the low bid to to um, Munter Enterprises for one hundred twenty thousand nine hundred. Yeah, I'll put forth a motion to award the bid to our low bidder, Munter Enterprises, for one hundred twenty thousand nine hundred dollars. And second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any questions? Discussion? Okay. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Okay, we have a couple of road dedications at Sonoma Grove. Um, is this Ryan or is this this you? Yeah. So there's a new subdivision off of Loudon Road. Uh, this is uh, there's two roads that are under consideration by the board to accept is road dedication, Berkeley Way and Brentwood Boulevard. Um, Kirk and I have been out there and inspected it. And they meet all the standards and all our documentation is in. You know, just uh, I would condition the uh, approval um, for final review of documents by our town council. So, so I want to move those two roads for approval for dedication to the town. I'll move that those two roads, Berkeley Way and Brentwood Boulevard, on the recommendation of Kirk Woodcock and our engineer, uh, be approved for dedication. I'm going to suggest you add the condition that Ryan proposed. Along with the condition that Ryan proposed. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Hi. Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Okay, Kirk has requested us to send on to the county and ultimately uh, DOT some uh, sp speed limit uh, reductions and or recommendations for four roads, Waller, Worth, North, and uh, Blanchard. The process is to forward those to Saratoga County and uh, I, I believe Ryan and they forward on to DOT for the, their Correct. studies, right? Correct. <coughs> so we need a motion to forward those requests, the highway superintendent's request to uh, Saratoga County. Can you make a motion we send the uh, request for the limit for those four roads in the county? I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Uh, committee reports. I got a call from Laura Vinsect uh, tonight. She owns a field. We park cars at Gavin Park. We talked to her last week. Mr. McCachran, I don't know what happened, he get back to her, but she called me. You know, there's been a death in the family. The money isn't there like it used to be. She's willing to lease it to us again. She wanted uh, 12000 for 2018. I said, that's out of the question. So she agreed to 10. And I wasn't aware of this, but in some of these events we have, they're charged for parking? That's correct. Pick up three, four grand? Yes, it says 650 per day, two days, $1,300. All right. All right. You know, they still want to farm something. They don't want the whole field used anymore because they feel it's so the traffic ruins the soil. So I would think it's a little bit more than the third mark you looked at it, whether For the? For the parking. With the field. Yeah, it, it, I took pictures of it during the lacrosse tournament, and if you park them the way they should be parked, it'd probably be just over half the field. If there's no supervision, it takes about three quarters. Right. And she always she also talked about if we put some barricades up, and Mark agreed that John King would do <coughs> that. Um, and she only wants the two upper driveways really used. And I said we'd probably put some cables at the other ones to keep everybody out. It's something we'd really need. And I make a motion that we come in some type of have the lawyer draw up an agreement with her. She's gonna give me a map, just what's gotta be said. Yeah. For the ten thousand for twenty eighteen. Do we already have a contract uh, that we just could use that and just amend the amount? Uh, or well, she's got some other things and I said we face all the uh, liability. And I think with her we should have everything in writing, the barricade okay. and 
Mm -hmm. um, the chaining note yeah. entrance is off. She doesn't want used. And I think you said John King take care of that, right, Mark? Right. Thought so. Yeah. So that's something, Mar Mark. So if I get sure. just what she wants, yeah, sure. you can draw something. Sure. Okay. I second that. I think that would be a. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. Uh, we particularly need it for next year, and there's a lot of events and park fest and things that uh, we need that parking area. So, um, so you made John made a motion. Mr. Stryker, second. And second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Is there any other committee reports? I have a committee. Oh, John, go, you go ahead. Knock yourself out. Mr. St Councilman Stryker was in this week and he talked about part of Gavin Park where they store things. I guess there's a building. Maybe we could clear some of the woods, maybe get some gravel. So if this problem comes up again, maybe we can have additional parking. And I think if we had Mr. Stryker and Mark and Ryan look at it, I think Larry Gordon could probably get kids from both seas to clear it. And I think that's something we really should be looked into. You know, we can make some more parking for another 100 or 200 cars, and then we won't be in this bind again. Okay. So we'll have uh, Steve work with Mark uh, on l looking at that. Ryan let and, Kirk and, uh, be and involved, Kirk too. and he could give us help. I think yeah. Larry Gordon could get both these over there for training for him. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, um, I sit on the um, code revision committee, and we haven't met since May, and that's a bit of a concern for my, myself, and I just don't know why. Okay. Yeah, I talked to you, the, to Bob Barrett, the chair, and uh, I forget what what's why that hasn't been moving forward. I know you 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 got the solar thing done, and do um, you have anything? Yeah, it was just. Uh, when we left off, Bob Bear was going in for surgery, I believe, and uh, so it was kind of one of those things that uh, just hasn't been picked up in the last month or two. Uh, there's been coordination between Lucy Harlow and Bob Barrett to try to schedule something to get it going again. And uh, there was an email yesterday from Bob Barrett to Mark Mikens looking for some dates and information on code updates. So it's imminent. Yeah, I got it. I got an email from. Uh, I was copied on an email last pri uh, over a week ago, looking for some dates and still nothing. So, just yeah. as long as that's on the forefront. Yeah, we just stay on top of that, Ryan, because it should uh, get that moving again. Okay, I just asked. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kirk stopped my garage last week. About he was had a great, great uh, concern about these roads with these letters of credit. Now I have a concern with them, but now some of the t I don't really understand that. But some of these times are running out. I think maybe are you aware of that, supervisor? Um, I know that there's there are a couple of roads. Yes, that Ryan has mentioned to me. What happens when time r runs out on those letters of credit? They're extended. Yeah. We never lose the letter of credit. We're never going to lose. Are it. the roads ever going to be done? That's what I'm getting at. When we request, there's a few subdivisions. We usually, you know, Kirk and I will get together and say, you know, it needs to be done. We, we like to have the subdivision like uh, 80 to 90 percent built out. That way, the heavy truck traffic is off before the final pavement is put down. Um, and some of these subdivisions are getting older. And um, look, the road on Route Nine there goes to nowhere. Ridge. The hilltop. Hilltop. Yes, that one is of. We've discussed it several times. That one needs some work. Um, and we met with the contractor a year and a half ago, I believe. Oh, uh, yeah. Did he go out of business? <coughs> no. Still well, here. No, he not a year and a half ago. I thought maybe he yeah, out of business. It was just, uh, so, you know, it just needs pressure put on them to make All some right. repairs or pull the right letter of credit. We do the work ourselves. Something lawyers should do or town engineer? Whatever the town board wants to do, if they want to pull the letter. You know, it's, 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 I, I just think these things should be taken care of. You know, people, you know, they're complaining the growth and this. This is all part of it, and this is thing that they uh, complain about. Right. I mean, Kirk, can you just say we can? We can pull the letter out any time, any time we want. It's just some, you know. Right. But then we got to do the work ourselves. Why don't you and John sit down about this so you come up with what you want to do, and we'll get it on it. Okay, Kirk. Just some of them are getting older. Yeah. <coughs> The binder course is getting destroyed more <coughs> every day, and 
you know, you're going to have to address it in a different way. And my concern was the letter of credit isn't enough to do what we have to do should suppose we lose that letter of credit because the blacktop goes up the price. So are we being slighted on the price to get the job done? It's my concern that Allen shouldn't pay anything to, to put a top on a road that's a developer's cost. Right. So, you know, yeah, John and I can look at that and see what we can get accomplished with that. Thank you. Okay, Supervisor. That's it, John. Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, I just have uh, one item. I, I want to thank the Bicentennial Committee for their work this year. Um, the Chair, Sue Lance, um, our um, event coordinator, Fran Dingman, and the entire Bicentennial, Bicentennial staff, and especially I see Nancy Riley in the back. She's worked endless hours on uh, over this past year on putting together the events for uh, next next year so I just wanted to recognize that committee and thank them for their hard work um, their the events are going along just fine the first event is scheduled for January 27th um, it's a Saturday night at uh, McGregor it's called the kickoff gala um, we've already committed to or 150 tickets or so are already spoken for so there's only about a hundred left if anyone's interested you can purchase them online or you can come up here and pay with cash or, or a check uh, through Nancy Riley but I expect that event to be sold out in, in short order so well, great I have one one final thing uh, I don't know last Friday night we had our tree lighting ceremony at Gavin Park it's a beautiful night it was a great success. The trees, the lights, everything was really well done. Santa Claus, yeah. Santa Claus came. So I'd like to thank Mark Marino and the entire staff, John King, and everybody down there did a great job. Uh, Wilton Fire Department, uh, Greenfield Fire Department, they came in with Santa Claus on the fire trucks and the sirens you know, going. It was really exciting for the kids. So uh, it was a really nice event, and uh, I'm looking forward to it next year. So thank you all. And uh, one final thing is, uh, last month we talked about, you know, uh, some reductions in, in the uh, developments on roads. So, uh, I have uh, Ryan's kind of looking into a few things on that. So, I just want to let you know that we're, we are looking into it a little further, so. Okay. And then one last thing, which is, um, you have before you is the letter. We got a letter from... Uh, uh, Deborah Case. Remember f back oh, three, four months ago, we uh, had some restorations of headstones at, uh, at the cemetery on, on Loudon Road, and it uh, really worked out well. And it's just a th thank you letter. She has some uh, great parents, grandparents, and great parent, grand great grandparents uh, in that, and she's just commending uh, the job that was done uh, okay. over there. So. Okay, so next step for the controls report. Okay, the first item that requires town board approval are the 2017 budget transfers. Any questions? Questions for Jeff on the transfers? <coughs> if there's no questions, then someone want to move the uh, to approve the transfers? I make a motion to approve uh, the transfers, those two items. There's a second. Second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Okay, next set of personal items. The first one, um, the following town employees are requesting to attend the New York State Association of Towns meeting being held in New York City, February 18th to the 21st of 2018. Overnight travel, so it requires town board approval. <coughs> I'll make a motion to send all six. I'll second. February 18th of the 21st. Okay. Um, we have a motion, a second. Aye. 
propose some move. There may be there may be one the plan. We haven't heard back from the planning board to the, uh, the planning department yet. They're allowed to send one too, but we haven't heard anything back yet. So if we do hear anything, we'll include that in the motion if they okay. they do want to go. Okay. So someone sec the second the. I did. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, next item. Uh, Marcus Hart. He's passed his assistant building inspector exam. The town board now needs a permanent position effective December 7th, 2017. Um, to approve him to his permanent position. Second it. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Congratulations to Marcus. He's working out very well in the building department, and we're glad to have him as uh, now uh, fully appointed in a permanent position. Okay, the last one is uh, it's more informational, and um, it has to do with the traffic study at Route 50 in Jones Road. And I'm going to turn it over to Ryan. So recently, uh, the town um, hired a consultant uh, with the funds of developers to uh, take a look at this traffic study along Jones Road, Route 50, Ingersoll, and Old Gick, over by Stewart's in that intersection there, just to look at traffic, <coughs> potential uh, future improvements in that area to help with traffic issues, level of service, accidents, and things of that nature. Um, the next phase of this project would be to uh, gather these studies, bring them together, meet with CDTC and uh, New York State DOT to start seeking funding for you know, long range planning of looking out 5, 10, 15, 20 years of what can be done there to implement to improve the traffic in that area. So that's, we're going to uh, hire a consultant to move it along and you know, work with us to do that. The money's already in this year's budget as well, so the funds are there, so. Okay, um, is there any other business to come before the board tonight? The motion to adjourn. Everybody have happy, happy, and safe yeah, holidays. Say Merry Christmas, happy holidays. I'll be thinking about all of you in the room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Motion. No. No. Motion to adjourn, Joe. <laughs>